to bring to you some encouraging words, I introduce to you Larry and Lala Senior Counsel. A stalwart champion of justice and esteemed legal figure, poised to lead as chairman. With nearly three decades, he does not look that way, eh? of legal experience spanning multiple jurisdictions and a distinguished career highlighted by his appointment as senior counsel, Larry brings unparalleled expertise and leadership to the forefront. His dedication to the values of the United National Congress and his extensive contributions to public service and legal advocacy underscore his readiness to steer the UNC towards a future rooted in integrity, progress, and equality for Trinidad and Tobago. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Lala, Senior Counsel. Thank you, thank you, Kamala, for that very warm introduction. UNC, good evening. It is such a pleasure to see such a packed poll this evening. Give yourself a round of applause. Ever since I was a child in high school, I realized something. If I had a problem with maths and I was pounding my head trying to work it out and to get the right answer, the best thing to do would be to go to sleep at night with the problem in my head and get up next morning. And nine times out of ten, by the time I woke up in the morning, the answer to the problem would be clear as the point of a star in front of me. You see, I use that word star, keep that in mind. I'm coming back to that just now. Well, that happened again last night. Because by the time I went to bed, I could not figure out what I was going to say to you here this evening, in the brief time that I have. But I got up at 3 o'clock this morning. I don't go to bed at 3, I wake up at 3. And true to form, the answer hit me just as I sat up from my bed. And it came to me in the form of a word, a French word, raison d'etre. Now, I never did French in school, and the only French I know is maybe to say croissant. Anita, I get that right? Which I like to have with cheese. But this word, raison d'etre, is believed to have been used for the first time in the 1800s by political philosopher, economist, and woman rights advocate, John Stuart Mill. And there's a lot of power in a word. Raison d'etre means reason for being. And I guess the reason it popped into my head at 3 o'clock this morning is for me to speak to you about our reason for being and the UNC's reason for being. When Bastille Pandey broke away from Robinson in 1988 and he and John Humphrey, Trevor Sudama, Kelvin Ramnath and others, some of you who are here today stood in the now holy mud in Arangues. What was the reason for that? When Club 88 and the then UNC was formed 35 years ago. What was the reason for that? What was the real reason for that? Pandey could have stayed in government with Robinson because he was in government and he could have existed in comfort, but he left. He left, he stepped out of his comfort zone because his razor d'etre, his reason for existence was being stifled by Robinson. And Pandey's reason for being led him to form the UNC. That, that reason for being was to ensure that he was able to truly take the men and women, all of you who made up his support base, into government. 
And that support base was the men and women and their families of the sugar and oil belt. Men and women who appreciated the value of hard work and sweat and toil and building. Men and women who appreciated the importance of family. And Pande appreciated that the values of those men and women and their children that was honed and developed in cutting cane and planting garden could be better put to work building a country, building this country. And Pande's raison d'etre led him to build the UNC into the strongest party it could be. It led him to build... It led him to build a truly national party and to seek out men and women of every creed and race who could make it the strongest party. And that, and that is why he sought out and actively recruited people like Mervyn Assam, Jerry Yetming, Ramesh Lawrence Maraj, Sadiq Baksh, Carlos John, and others. Pandey truly believed my brothers and sisters, that a strong UNC was needed for a strong TNT. And as a country, we bought into Pandey's belief and philosophy. I could vividly recall, as a young man, going to the then UNC's grand public meetings at the Hilo St. Augustine car park. All you can remember that? or right here in Montrose Junction, or at Sapero Street in San Fernando, or the Quasi in San Juan, and seeing waves of people that would come on their own from all over the country. They were not busting with maxi taxis stopping at checkpoints. That is an insult to our party. That is an insult to the philosophy that we believe in. And they would stand there for hours waiting to hear from Pandey. What wonderful times those were, brothers and sisters. What exciting times those were. What has happened to those times? What has happened since then? And Pandey's constant refrain was that the UNC was not there to give you a handout, but to give you a hand up. He would always say that it is better to teach a man to fish than to give him a fish. And that is what And that is what Pandey wanted for the country, for the whole country. He wanted to raise the country by giving it a hand up rather than a handout, giving people dignity by providing opportunities for jobs, giving them a way to build their homes and their families providing opportunities for them to educate their children so that their children could rise higher than their parents and giving businessmen opportunities to build and grow their business and create more jobs. The raison d'etre of the end of the UNC was to be in government. The UNC the UNC, my brothers and sisters, is a government party. It is not an opposition party. But it seems that today, there are people who believe that the UNC is an opposition party. They are hell-bent on ensuring that we remain in opposition. Or they simply don't know how to win government and how to put our party into government. Because that is the only thing that could explain why certain things have been happening in the party and why the party has been constantly failing in the last nine years. Nine years is a long time now. It explains why people with great minds like Kevin Ramnarain, Bo Tiwari, the late Fazal Karim, God rest his soul, Fuad Khan, and Vasan Bharat were and have been excluded from the party. It explains why persons are recruited into the party and put into office in the party. 
firstly, not on merit and ability, but on the singular mandatory requirement of loyalty to personality. That nonsense has to stop. It explains why the party is not being made its most attractive to the national community. The belief that we are an opposition party and the comfort in and the apparent love for opposition power by some has us, why, has us where we are. UNC, you need a NATEX that is attractive to the national community and can take you into government. I saw a flyer for the other side's meeting that is to take place on Monday, the star team. I refer to them as the other side, and I want to be very cautious about how I say this, and I want to be very clear about what I say. I refer to them as the other side, not as the enemy in this election, because at all times, my brothers and sisters, at all times, during this election, we must remember that there are no enemies in the UNC. We are all one party, one family, working with one objective, to remove the fail and floundering PNM and to replace it with a strong, united, credible UNC. And that is why in this campaign, I will call no names publicly, no names, and I will not disparage anyone. But looking at the Star Team's poster, I saw that they were putting as their campaign slogan, the tagline that they have grown accustomed to using, UNC and proud. But every time I see them use those words, UNC and proud, I wonder what is that pride that the other side speaks about. I know that they can't be proud about the state that the party is in, where no groups, no organs of the party are functioning, where we don't have functioning party groups, even in marginal must-win constituencies, where there exists no forum for members to freely express themselves and get their voices heard by the leadership where after 35 years of existence, we don't have a property. We don't have a place to call UNC home. Is that what they are proud of? Do they really understand what the UNC is about? What is the reason for the UNC's existence? I know they can't be proud of the fact that the party has lost successive general elections when it should have won them. We should have won in 2015, and we should have won in 2020. Even in the height of COVID, when the government was floundering, floundering on every national issue, the star team was unable to reform the party and put forward a slate of credible candidates that could win favor with the national community. And having lost successive elections, I know they cannot be proud of the fact that we have not sat for one moment. This party has not sat for one moment to do an analysis of the reason for those successive losses and what we can do to win. And we can win. The UNC could win. And we must win. I know that having failed to remove the PNM in two successive general elections, the star team can't be proud when they drive around the country and see the wretched state that the country is in, where our roads are in the most deplorable state they have been in for decades, where there's garbage strewn and uncollected almost anywhere you look in the country. All over appears untidy, chaotic, unkept, where we can't get water in our taps and where we are being threatened with an oppressive TN tech rate increase. I know that having failed to remove the PNM in two successive tries, the star team can't be proud when every day we see our homes are being invaded by criminals, 
We are afraid to stop at the side of the road to go and buy a doubles or to go in a parlor to buy a soft drink or, or a bottle of water for fear that we could be caught up in robbery. Our businessmen and women, big and small, from the man selling tomatoes at the side of the road to the hardware owner, are being faced with tax demand by gangs that threaten to maim, kill, or burn their premises. Is that the kind of country we want? I know that having failed to remove the PNM in two successive tries, they on that star team can be proud when they see the economy in tatters with thousands on the breadlines, when the government has been able to close down Petrotrin and turn it into a scrap iron heap without any political consequences. Because they on that star team has the opposition at its weakest. We now have the weakest opposition we have ever had in this country. They can't be proud of the fact that we have to go and beg the banks for 500 US when we have to travel. What you can buy with 500 US? And they can't be proud of the fact that our only economic hope under the PNM is to peg our future on Venezuela under Maduro. I know that having failed to remove the PNM in two successive tries, that star team can be proud to see that the PNM under Rowley has made TNT into a virtual dictatorship where the government is able to do as it pleases because there is a perception that there is no credible opposition to stand up to the government. Do you deserve a UNC like that? Look at the way in which the government has gotten away with the removal of Jawala from office, the Vincent Nelson scandal, the death of the divers at Petrotrin, the actions of Rowley in the withdrawal of the merit list and the removal of Gary from office, and look at the present move that is afoot to remove the Auditor General from office. And in all of that, in all of that, my brothers and sisters, the opposition in the way it is presently organized and run by this star team is unable to get the country to rally behind it. Is the star team really proud of that? When you look at all these things and we worry about the future of Trinidad and Tobago and you see them putting UNC and proud in your face, you have to conclude that they on that star team must be mad. They must be mad. It is all mama guy and nothing more than false pride that they are using to mask the abject failure that has failed, that has faced this party in the last nine years. A long time under successive natexes that, has, that have been installed to lead the party under the star symbol. The present natex simply does not understand the UNC's reason for being. It's raised on debt, or else we would not be in the position we are in today. If they truly understood what the UNC is and how much struggle went into creating it, we would not be in the position that we are in today. But something occurred to me when I look at that five-pointed star being used by the star team. The star has five points from which its brilliance shines. That team has no one, and it could attract no one from which brilliance could radiate. The five points of the star are here with us. Rushton, Anita, Rye, Rodney, and Dinesh. They are the most brilliant points of the star. And now they have said, enough is enough. They have taken a stand to bring change to you. I want to ask you, I want to ask you, within your heart, to look, about, look at what these five did and why they did it. Just as Pande, in, in a move of great sacrifice, separated from Robinson and the NAR, 
because he felt that the talent and ambition of his support base was being stifled by Robinson. So too these fives have separated from the thinking and they have separated from the weakness that has been keeping us in opposition. In so doing, they have taken a great risk. But they have taken that risk for you, the members of the party, and the survival of the party. They have stood up in the mud when no others were prepared to do that for you. And they have said, enough is enough. The nonsense has to stop. And we have to put this party in a position to return it to its moorings, as the party was meant to be. A government party, a government UNC, and a stronger UNC for a stronger TNT. Rushton is a man who understands the UNC re UNC's reason for being. He's a builder and a success story, a successful businessman in the technology field. He is the type of person that Pandey himself would have recruited into the UNC. And he's committed to seeing the UNC take its rightful place in the governance of this country. In the days of ahead, my dear brothers and sisters, members of the UNC all, look after your interests. Join us as we move to return hope to our party and hope to our country and ensure that Trinidad and Tobago is once more able to bask under the glory and brilliance of the rising sun. On June 15th, give us a stronger UNC for a stronger TNT. Vote for the class hand. I thank you.